Hi, this is Andreas from Praetera. In this video tutorial, I will teach you how to use Breeze to make a quantification model from hyperspectral images, and then use it to analyze the content in unknown samples. Breeze is organized into four different views, each with a specific purpose, as noted under the button for each view. As you can see, we already have a study here called NUTS classification. To add a new study, I will press the Add button in the lower left corner. Here you can select to add a new empty study, perhaps if you are going to record uh, new images from a camera, or import previously recorded external image data from your hard drive, or finally, you can download tutorial data from the internet. And this is what I'm going to do here. A study called powder quantification has now been created that includes images of plastic bags containing a mix of powders. Let's open this study. The image data in the study is organized into two groups uh, called train, including seven images, and a group called unknown mix, containing three unknown samples. Let's open the train group. In the menu on the left side, you can see all the individual images uh, or measurements, as we call them in Breeze, uh, that are in this group. Let's select the measurement and click on the Pixel Explorer tab. To do a quick analysis of the spectral variation image, a PCA model has been created based on all pixels in the image. Each point in the scatter plot corresponds to a pixel in the image. The points in the scatter plot are clustered based on their spectral similarity. The max variance image is colored by the variation in the first component of the PCA model, which then corresponds to uh, the x-axis in the scatter plot. And this visualizes the biggest spectral variation in the image. In this case, this is the difference between the sample in red and the background in blue. By selecting a cluster of points, you can see where these pixels are located in the image and also the average spectra for that selection. Let's press the up button in the upper left corner to return to the group level. And then let's press up again to return to the study level. Now let's import the reference values for the training samples. If you press the import tab, you can then select the import reference data. I will select this uh, CSV file called powder quantification train that contains the reference values that we're going to use to develop this model. In the table, uh, columns and values have now been added for the three properties, which corresponds to the percentage of each powder type for these training samples. And the values uh, are matched to the correct sample based on the name in the sample column, which we also had in the spreadsheet. Now let's create a sample model segmentation to remove the background pixels and to automatically identify the sample objects in our images. I will press the add sample model button located under the table. In the first step of the sample model wizard, you can select the images that you will use in the model. By default, nine measurements are included, which is okay. In the next step of the wizard, I can select the spectral bands or wavelengths that I want to include in the model. In this case, all wavelengths are included except the, the first two and last two, uh, which is okay. In the next step, a mosaic has been created of the nine images 
and the PCA model has been created from all the pixels in this mosaic. The goal here is to select and include only the pixels that belong to the samples, then that then will be used to make the sample model. If I select all the pixels in one of the clusters, I can see that these pixels correspond to the sample pixels. And then press include only. And I can see that all the background pixels have been excluded. And also that it updates the PCA model. To clean up the sample pixels even more, I can remove uh, border pixels. Okay, I think this looks pretty good now. We have only included uh, sample pixels here. In the next step, I will set the critical distance to the sample model. That will be used to determine if pixels are sample or not in new images. To do that, I can drag this red line to the right to move the threshold. The aim here is to find a level where all powder pixels are included, but uh, pixels from the background are not included. In the last step of the sample model wizard, I can set a minimum area size. That is used to automatically exclude smaller unwanted objects, for example, dust or dirt in my images. In this example, all objects under 2000 pixels will be excluded from the image, which is fine. In the table for this study, I can now see all the sample objects in the images after the sample model has been applied. And we can see that the background pixels have been removed. Let's press the Explore tab. A PCA model has here been created based on the average spectrum for each sample. In the menu on the right, I can select to color the scatter plot based on different property values or I can add uh, labels. Now let's use the average spectrum for each sample and the property values, which is the percentage of the three powders to train a quantification model. So to do that, I will press the model button in the lower right corner of the screen to move to the model mode. Here we can see I have the sample model that I had created before. I'll press the add button and then select to do a quantification model. In the first step of the quantification model wizard, I will include all three properties in the model. The second step of the wizard, uh, I can select the samples that I want to include in the model. By default, it has included all the training samples, which is okay. In this step of the wizard, you can select what uh, spectral bands or wavelengths you want to include in the model. Um, the view you see here on the right side, this is the average spectrum for each sample. Above that, you also have an option where you can select different spectral pretreatments to use. By default, I will use this SNV, which works well in most cases. A PLS quantification model has now been calculated. The overview uh, total for all Y is showing you how good your POS model is. Uh, in this case, the auto fit used three components. The red bar here, which is the R square, which shows you the model fit. And the Q square, the blue bar is showing you the prediction from cross validation. Using these three components, uh, the R square is around 0.99 or almost 1.0. And the Q square is around 0.89. So this is indicating a very good model. The distance to the model in X and Y graphs uh, show the distance to the model for each sample. 
a high bar indicating that the sample might be an outlier. The model scatter plot and the distance to model plots can be used to identify and exclude outliers. But in this case, everything looks okay. In the last step of the wizard, you can evaluate how good the model is. The y versus y calc plot is showing how well the model can explain the variation for each of the y variables. The variable overview is showing the r square and q square, but for each individual variable. Everything looks okay here, so let's press finish to complete the model. Now let's create a prediction workflow using the quantification model to analyze the percentage of the three powders in images with samples of unknown content. To do that, I will press the play button in the lower right corner to move from the model mode to the play mode. And then once I'm in the play mode, I press the add button to make a new workflow. Here I will select to use uh, record data and then select the unknown mix group. A table is generated with the predicted values for the properties baking soda, vanilla, and potato starch for each of these unknown samples. By clicking on the property in the table, I can display the prediction on a pixel level. In the graph tab, you can see the steps that are in the workflow. First, the measurement or image is analyzed by your sample model to find a sample object, for which it then applies to your quantification model to calculate or predict the baking soda, vanilla, and potato starch content. In addition to analyzing images that are already recorded on your hard drive, you can also use Breeze to analyze images in real time directly from the camera. If your computer is not connected to a camera, you can simulate this by using the camera simulator in Breeze. I will generate a new group here called real time. As you can see, the images are, are analyzed in real time and the results are displayed in the table. In the group level, under the export tab, I can select to export the results from the table to a .csv spreadsheet or to an HTML report. You can also export your uh, pixel data uh, as spectral data, which is then a hypercube, or as the predicted values, in this case, the, the percentage of the three powders, but for each pixel. The HTML report can be viewed in an internet browser and can be easily shared with your colleagues, even if they don't have the Breeze software. Thank you for watching this Breeze video tutorial. If you would like to have step-by-step -step instructions on what I just showed you in this video, I recommend that you visit the Predictor website to download uh, the PDF tutorial called Powder Quantification.